The Awakened Hardest Podcast with John White. Welcome to Season 2 of the Awaken Hardest Podcast. I am John White. In today's episode, I am going to really start to dive into this grief series, starting with a background on me, giving you an idea through a timeline of events of my experiences with death and grief. I want to share these in hopes of healing other people giving them hope is so important. In my opinion, when you lose somebody, you kind of feel lost and you you need to find some kind of hope. And I, I hope that I can provide some of that. I also know that this is therapeutic for me, so it does help me. And I'm really hoping to find others that have gone through similar experiences that I've gone through hear their stories and how they've dealt with their situations, their events that have affected them in who they are today. I really think it's important for all of us to be able to tell our story in one way or another. And I did want to do this episode as a background for people to be able to reference later on. Plus, I think it's a good way for you to be able to see if you have any similarities with me. I want to throw a little disclaimer in here as well. I absolutely am not looking for any sympathy. I am not a victim of some of these terrible circumstances. Maybe I come across as dramatic. I don't know. Sometimes when I edit and listen to myself, I do think I'm coming across a little dramatic. But when I'm recording it, I'm going with the flow of the emotions and... I just want to be clear that I don't feel as if I'm a victim and I'm not looking for sympathy. I absolutely now at this point in my life am very appreciative of the circumstances I've been in because it's made me very strong in the person I am today. And I would like to take some things back if that would be possible, but it is what it is. And I'm content with that now. Just my little disclaimer I wanted to throw in here before we begin. So let's uh, get into my past and and how this, how grief and death was introduced to me. It honestly, in maybe one of the most impactful ways, or let me say, it didn't directly affect me at the time. I was a year old. My mom was, I believe she had just turned 19. I am her first born her father had been diagnosed with cancer and he had passed away at the, I believe he was 55 years old. So it obviously didn't directly affect me as a baby, but the effects it had on my mom followed her all the way until she passed away a couple of years ago and was a large part of a lot of sadness in her and things that transpired in our lives, myself and my four other siblings, it impacted us a lot in many ways going forward. I can say it directly affected me because I was named after him. And the, how do I say this? Um, The way that my mom looked at her dad, he could do no wrong as far as I've ever heard her speak of him. And I would learn over the rest of my life how big of a hole it left in her heart. It destroyed her. I would be reminded numerous times as I grew up, with my dad not being around, I was trying to be this man that I never really knew. And the way that she talked about him he seemed like the most perfect person. And as you can forecast, it obviously affected me in numerous ways going forward, trying to be this man that honestly didn't really exist. 
but did in my mom's heart and her mind. And that pretty much, in my eyes, trapped my mom in a 19-year-old's mindset for the rest of her life until she would later on pass away at the age of 57. Moving forward, a couple years, let's see, I think I was in kindergarten. I don't remember exactly. I want to say I was like five or six. There was the first time I ever experienced the death or finding out that a child could die. My mom's friend had lost her, I think he was about a year or two, two years old. He was a toddler and he had passed away and it was sudden and shocking. That was my first time ever experiencing, or that was my first time understanding that a kid could die. And I don't know if you can remember back to when you first realized that kids can die. It's kind of an eye-opening experience in itself. I remember thinking before that, that yeah, I mean, only old people die. That's, or people that go to war. And that's one of the few memories I honestly have of being a kid is that moment. So it obviously affected me in some large way. When I was nine years old, 10, uh, 10 years old, somewhere nine, 10 years old, uh, my aunt Bev had lived with us. My mom's aunt and my mom had been taking care of her. And at this point, my mom had five kids. There was five of us in a two-bedroom apartment. And my aunt being taken care of in the living room, very sick with cancer. And then she had passed away. And that was an experience in itself, just because you, you have your aunt living with you. And that's the first time you're ever really watching somebody die as a kid in your house. And then, uh, then the, the biggest impact of my childhood was losing my grandma on Christmas Eve of 1992. I was 12 years old and it was the most shocking, traumatic thing that probably happened to me as a child. Because again, we're talking about my mom's, her only surviving parent. And she wasn't even 30 by this, or maybe she was 30 by then. Yeah, she'd have been like 30, 31. So she had lost both of her parents by the age of 30 or 31. But for me personally, my grandma, because there was five of us kids and my dad wasn't around, we were we were very poor. My grandma was our only stability. She was the only thing that I could 100% count on. Without my dad being around, I was kind of forced into this male role that I at 12 years old, was not ready to embrace. And losing my grandma, the floor fell out from underneath me. And it crushed my mom again. So not having that stability, so much fear and question. And my grandma and I, it wasn't even the stability. I want to rewind here. More importantly, I love my grandma like she was another parent. It was my mom and my grandma. They were like my two parents. And my grandma was the only person that I could feel when I stayed the night at her house. It was the only place where it was just peaceful. There was no chaos going on. It was always relaxed, safe. And she was always so great to me. Always so sweet to me. You know, all my aunts, her daughters were like, you speak of your grandma like this really sweet woman, but we don't remember her to be that way. And they would say, you know, you're, you got that treatment. We didn't get that treatment. You were like the golden child to her. So you can see how much that affected and hurt me, especially going into my teenage years, being 12 years old, getting ready to experience junior high. And another thing that really sucked was at the beginning of the school year, she was the one that bought us our new outfits. And all of you that grew up poor know how much those outfits meant for the rest of the school year. Then it just didn't stop. My godfather, he was 29, he passed away suddenly, which was my mom's cousin that she was extremely close with. And that 
again, crushed her. He was my guy. He would take me to see WWF when it was called WWF back when Hulk Hogan was around in the, you know, the late eighties. And I just remember that being again, devastating for my mom. And it really crushed her a couple of years after that, you know, 92, my grandma dies, I believe 93, my, my godfather, Jeff dies. And then I don't know, a couple of years after that, her cousin, Tina, Jeff's sister is involved in a horrific tragedy where she loses her life. And she must have been, I want to say, in her early 30s. And again, she was one of my mom's best friends growing up. My mom is just left and right taking blows. And the effects it's having on her is she just became lost. And that trickled down into our life, obviously. The drinking became more of a thing and the partying with her friends and friends staying with us. And yeah, it it was, it was pretty difficult uh, being a teenager going through all of that. Then when I was 18 years old, I had lost one of my buddies. Some of the first times, this was the first time I'd ever lost a friend to suicide. And that was, that was tough trying to, navigate friendships that I still had and what that meant to all of us. Rewinding back a little ways to when I was about 17, my dad had reunited with a girlfriend from high school and she had two kids. And we were at the time we were living with my dad because of a lot of chaos. If you'd like to know how we ended up with my dad and him not being in my life for a long time, I have a whole blog about it. I'll save that for another podcast or something, but we're living with my dad and he gets back with this ex-girlfriend from early on in his life. And she has a couple kids and her daughter was the same age as my younger brother and sister. And there's about a 10 year age difference there Uh, with her. I think it was about eight years, but she had uh, been diagnosed with brain cancer. And I remember when we first met her, she, I remember her having a couple of years left at least. And then there would be a lot of optimism that she was going to be okay. And it was like this roller coaster of her getting really sick and having to go to the hospital. And unfortunately, by the time I was 21, she had gotten really sick and then she had passed away. And that was... You know, it was difficult for me, but it really crushed my little brother and sister because they, they were, they were growing up with her and yeah, that was a tough one. That was, that was really difficult and in a, in a new way, she was only 13 years old. I think she was 13. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that one hit pretty hard. Moving on to, you know, my Right around that same time, my mom had lost her other aunt, my so my Aunt Bev, my grandma, and then my Aunt Jackie had then passed, and she was the mother of Jeff and Tina, who had passed a couple of years before that. And that again, I mean, my mom, my mom lived with there. I think around the around that same time for quite a while. We would always go over and visit her. We called her the old maid because she played old maid the card game with us. Super sweet woman, one of the most sweetest women in my entire life. And, you know, that was crushing in itself. And I don't remember, I remember it all being so shocking with Shannon, my sister to Aunt Jackie. And then in my 20s, my friends started just to fall off. There was a motorcycle accident where a drunk driver hit one of my friends. I had overdoses, uh, freak accidents that no one could explain. I ended up with a total of six friends passing between the age of 20 and I want to say 30, 31, somewhere around there. It was tough trying to navigate all of these previous experiences and my experience with death primarily through family. Now it turning into my friends and only being in my in my 20s, having to experiencing losing 
some very close friends that I, some of them I had just become friends with and only been hanging out with for a, a couple of years and others I'd been friends with for a while. Watching friends leave behind their children and their families, being close with their families. Yeah, that was a whole new kind of grieving. Then, you know, I hit this this run in my 30s there where I just had three of my uncles all passed away from random different things. One was cirrhosis and one had a heart condition and one had cancer. And then I had an aunt also I would lose later on in my 30s. But the biggest one was the summer of 2018. My mom out of the blue, we got a phone call. I got a phone call from my uncle telling me that my mom had passed away. And it was about exactly a week after she had just left. She came up for my niece's graduation. She had been living in North Carolina. And she came up for a week to stay. And I have a lot of stories to go along with all of the things that transpired when she was here for that time period. From fighting with her to thankfully making things good with her before she left to, um, man, it's so hard to think back. This, this entire time period is, I'm just going to kind of breeze through. She basically was here, like I said, for my niece's graduation, graduating from high school. And then she went back to North Carolina. Her birthday was, she basically passed away a couple days after her birthday. They found her by herself and that alone is pretty tough to, to think about. Um, but it was very sudden and she ended up having a heart attack and completely out of the blue for all of us. It was crushing to my siblings and I, and that was the biggest blow I'd ever experienced in my entire life. It was something that I just, even having been through all these situations and around that same time, I had formed my own spiritual beliefs and my idea on what happens when you die. So I kind of thought I knew how to handle grieving her because I grieved this point in time so many people and I wanted to be strong. I was trying not to drink like I had for so many other situations in my past. I was in a place where I was open to dealing with the emotions as they came and not being afraid to let them out. But more importantly, I wanted to be the rock that my siblings needed. I went to work the next day. I have a business and I thought that going to work would be okay. And it was a huge mistake. I was such a mess for quite a while. And I really didn't even know it because it was kind of like a a numbness, there's adrenaline happening, this shock of the entire situation. Then came the funeral. A couple weeks after, the funeral was the eye opener. It was the, it was absolutely the end. And that was fucking terrible. Fast forward to 2020, I lost my dad. And any of you who have listened to previous episodes, you've heard me talk about how he, in 2016, he got a gallstone stuck in his bile duct, basically blocking the pancreas and having end up having necrosis and an 8 to 10% chance to live. They put him in an induced coma, about two surgeries a week. He survived it. He came out of the coma in really bad shape. He lost a lot of his organs and parts of his organs and so many things were taken out of his body that over the next, let's see, four years, he really struggled to, he just, his body became very malnutrition or he suffered from malnutrition badly. And eventually that's what happened. Uh, he ended up passing away and that was tough because we always knew that he wasn't going to make it out. 
the last three months, I was over there quite a bit. And my siblings, we all were going over to hang out with him. And we knew it was his last days. And that was a totally different situation than losing my mom. I would say losing my mom was 10 times tougher, but I was obviously closer with my mom. If you've heard any of the other po podcasts or understanding a little bit of my background, but this was different. I had reconciled with my dad years before this and became somewhat close with him and learned how to forgive him. And as he slowly had died and I, as we watched him slowly die, it was extremely difficult and in, in a whole new way. But by the end, I got to say what I wanted to say. Even as difficult as it was, I got to say everything I wanted to say. And I didn't get to do any of that with my mom. And that will forever be a hole that um, never gets to be filled. And it's it kind of sucks because the the shitty part of all of it is my mom being this amazing woman with a lot of fucking problems and pain in her life. There's so much that I always wanted to do to try to help her. And I got so frustrated and I don't know, the last 10 years of her life, her and I, I, I didn't, she was never mad at me, but there was so many times that I had so much anger for her and there's a lot of regret I have there. So it kind of sucks that the person that got all my attention before they passed away was my dad, who was quite a shitty person throughout a lot of his life, at least as far as I can remember and stories I've heard. Don't get me wrong. There's a good side to him. And he has his reasons for why he turned out the way he did. And, you know, we're all conditioned or we're all products of our environment and in a way that we kind of mirror our parents. So a lot of it wasn't his fault. But a lot of it was because he could have fixed a lot of these things and, and been better and been the cycle breaker back to my mom it just it just sucks again it sucks that, that he got all of my attention he got what i wish i could have gave my mom just having numerous conversations it would have been extremely difficult at the same time to watch her pass slowly the way that he did i think about that a lot too there's just a, there's just so many different angles and avenues when it comes down to these things and when you lose somebody that's so close to you it tears a fucking hole in you a hole that can never be filled and a lot of us try to fill that void with relationships that we'll have after losing that person. And as time goes on, you know, they, it doesn't get easier. It's just, it just always sucks. We're all a part of the shitty club, but I will say this as difficult as it is and as hard as it will be for the rest of your life after losing somebody, if you don't already know or haven't already experienced it, that there are ways different ways for all of us to grieve and still live a happy life. Nothing will bring them back, but I can tell you this, when it comes to the perspective I have on these losses, it makes me so grateful and appreciative of the moments I get with my kids, my family, my friends, and my relationships going forward. I think that I I understand that the holes that all of these people have left in my life, they will never be filled by anybody else. And when you understand that and you can pay attention to that, that's a healthy way of going forward. I don't want to forget, for those of you that don't know, I also lost my one of my closest friends a couple months back. And that, again... <sighs> You know, it didn't end with my dad, it, and it's not going to end, obviously. I'm only 42 years old. That's another difficult part of, of all of this is that there's more to come, and then it's there's going to be a lot more to come. I'm not trying to be looking at it from a negative light, but that's a sad reality that I, that I live in, and I don't live in fear. I live appreciative and grateful because all of these little moments are so important. They are so, so very special. And I think this is a good place to end this podcast. I hope that you 
I don't know, maybe found some kind of common ground with me somewhere. You can relate to something that I've gone through. Please, if you have, I would love to hear your story. If you'd like to just DM me on Instagram, email me. I appreciate you listening to my uh, sad story, (laughs) but I also hope to eventually have my siblings on the podcast and talk to them about their unique perspectives on these events that affected us all in different ways. We always try to find the funny stories and kind of poke fun at those that aren't here anymore, primarily our parents. (laughs) But I hope you continue to follow along and I appreciate you again. If you'd like to learn more about me and my experiences, follow at Awaken Hardest on Instagram or visit the website awakenhardest.com.